What's going on, everyone? It's me, Tim from Tierfond Orbital. Hope everyone's day is going well. We're going to talk about a lightsaber install today. This is for a Space Drunk Sabers custom hilt. Here it is. I um, don't know what the name of this hilt is, but in the uh, in the file in the file uh, naming convention. So I I, I got to save my projects, obviously in Fusion. I say I, I call it the Space Drunk Saber Sesame Street. This just kind of looks like it's very col colorful. It just kind of reminded me of an episode of Sesame Street. So that's just what I named it as. So I knew like what I was, you know, I, I had to name it something. That's the first thing that came to mind. Anyhow, we're going to talk about the install. We are going to come into Fusion and talk about the chassis. So one of the requests for this install was to have uh, a hybrid chassis, right? Uh, and... Uh, I knew that that was going to be a little bit challenging given the fact that commonly with Space Drunk Sabers hilts, uh, they are um, a lot of MHS V2 parts for the grip specifically. Uh, and that means there's only a one inch internal diameter uh, in this area, in the grip area. So I knew that that was going to be a little bit challenging designing a battery cover uh, and some brass greeblies for that. And uh, I don't believe that I have done a hybrid chassis for a one inch uh, internal diameter hilt. Uh, and I knew that I wanted to tackle that. I don't like saying no to people. Uh, it has been uh, it, to my detriment at times in the past. I don't like saying no, uh, but I do like a, a challenge. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite things about designing chassis for uh, not so common hilts or one-off hilts is the challenge uh, that you have to uh, get past as far as an install right so it's not you know typically i mean a lot of the, a lot of the times with space junk sabers for example uh, they're not your run-of-the-mill install because uh, you know they're custom hilts so you've got to figure out a way around a few things right so you've got we've got a large control box up here uh, that's got LEDs in it that need to be lit. These switches need to be wired up. Uh, you've got to figure out a way to secure the chassis and the hilt. Um, and there are all kinds of intricacies and um, challenges that come along with doing a hilt like that. Another thing that I knew was going to be possible was a 28 millimeter speaker because this pommel on the inside of this pommel, there's plenty of room for that. Uh, so in order to do that, you have to do a speaker pod as well. So I did design a few different components for this chassis to get it installed. And I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with the result, right? So we are going to come into Fusion and talk about the chassis. And then, of course, we will come up top, talk about how to use the hilt a little bit, talk about the install, and then we'll put a blade in it. And then we will be on our way. All right. So follow me down to Sesame Street. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> here it is, right? chassis for the Space Drunk Sabers custom hilt. So one of the things, again, that I really knew that was going to be a challenge was the um, the thickness and the amount of real estate that I had to work with, okay? So right off the bat, I knew that I was gonna have to do a tilted profi board module, right? Because you can't stack a board and a battery on top of one another in a one inch hilt. Um, I'm sure it's been done before, uh, I am not comfortable with that. I don't want my board rubbing on the inside of the grip. Uh, so uh, in order to alleviate that, I did a tilted profi board setup, right? So this, po this board uh, is a tilted board setup and it peaks the USB port as well as the SD card peak out under, from under, just under. I don't know why. Listen, let me back up. Let me, back, let me get a, maybe I'm drinking too much coffee. That's why I can't talk. All right. So profi board sits just in this trench or it's like just slides up underneath here. The SD card as well as the USB port peek out just underneath the threads for the upper part of the hilt, right? So you can still access everything you need to, uh, but the board just does kind of live inside of the upper part of the hilt. At the bottom here, there is a cap for my speaker pod as well as where my speaker pod PCB Right, there's this is a two conductor speaker pod PCB set from Smuggler's Outpost. I also have my kill switch up here. Now, there's a reason why I wanted to put the kill switch down here, and we'll talk about that when we come up top. I could have put it up here, uh, but this would have been really, really close to that threading, and I don't know that I would have had enough room. 
Uh, I'm, actually, I probably would have. But uh, my thought was it would be nice to have easy access to that kill switch by just removing your pommel, right? So you can unthread that pommel, hit your kill switch, and turn the hilt on without removing the entire grip, right? So the kill switch is down here, and then we've got two uh, rectangular LEDs on each side of that as well, so you can get a good look at those when you remove the pommel, okay? All of my leads come up the spine of the chassis and come up into the board area, okay? We've got a battery cover here, uh, another challenge I found with doing this build is magnets, right? So I need to have magnets to secure all of my brat, well, my my uh, uh, battery cover. I, I need to have magnets to secure my battery cover, and typically on the chassis side, I use thicker four millimeter by six millimeter magnets, and I couldn't do that with this because it was just so thin, right? So I've got. Uh, two by three are they two, two by three or four by one any anyhow smaller magnets for this battery cover in this build okay so there are three on each side and one up top and that holds that battery cover in place around back i did get some brass piping uh, like i designed some piping had these printed in brass and they were just epoxy to the side of the chassis okay and that's it. And then, of course, all of the way up top, we've got our lit PCB emitter. This is from KR Savers for the Saber Armory. All right. But that's it. Pretty much, you know, it's a simple static chassis. Uh, but again, the challenge here was space, right? So getting all of those brass components to fit uh, within the space that, that I had. I only had like a one inch internal diameter, right? So... Uh, not pictured here, obviously, is the speaker pod. It's a very simple speaker pod setup that lives inside of the pommel, right? So let's get a look at this guy. Come up top. Okay, so here it is. This is a custom hilt from Space Junk Savers. All right, some very interesting, um, very interesting, like, leather grip action happening here. I'm not quite sure what I would call that. Um, I'm sure that there's a name for this. Uh, like this type of buckling um, words are escaping me right now but anyhow uh, yeah very interesting looking custom hilt very colorful all right but again one of the challenges for this one was getting a chassis that would fit inside of this grip so let's get a look at that here is the chassis all right so we've got that brass battery cover this has been weathered okay and those that piping both of those all four of those piping pieces have also been weathered okay the chassis is secured into the upper part of the hilt with these screws so this screw i noticed protruded a little bit further into the uh, inside of this hilt so i utilized that as a chassis securement method and along this side underneath this one this one didn't protrude into the hilt uh, but it was i think it's like an m4 set screw uh, would fit inside of here so I use a set screw on this side so there are screws on both sides securing that chassis in place okay and then I had to bring all my leads up into this control box so one of the modifications that I had to make with this control box to get it wired up the hole underneath this was very very small and I had to bring what like eight conductors up into this control box to wire up my switches as well as my LEDs here uh, so I had to just you know, open that hole up a little bit longer or a little bit wider to fish my wires up, right? So I've got to have all of those wires kind of coiled up inside of the chassis as I slide it in the hilt. And then I've got to fish them up into this control box area to wire it up. So that is what I had to do for that. Just a small, slight modification, okay? But that's it. So let's get a battery in this guy. This will take a button top 18650 battery okay so go ahead and take your battery cover off all right so here are those magnets that i was talking about so smaller magnets on each side of the hilt just because or each, each side of the chassis just because the wall thickness was so thin here so smaller magnets on these sides and then up top i did i was able to get a four by six neodymium magnet up top right um, but still very secure. I love using these rectangular magnets. Okay. Button top 18650. 
spring side is your negative, so go ahead and put your battery in the battery tray. Put your cover back on, and you can hit your kill switch, right? So you're not going to hear anything right now uh, because the speaker is not connected. One of the other requests for this install, Nick, I'm talking to you, uh, was to get a blade connector that could be independently wired. So Nick specifically requested to have this wired up independently so you could get animation in that PCB. Uh, and because I am so unorganized, my, Jer my buddy Jeremy is going to give me shit for this, because I'm so unorganized, I installed this entire hilt without putting in the PCB that uh, the customer requested. All right, so I use my typical, the KR Saber, Saber Armory PCBs. Uh, they don't have that extra data line. Uh, and I, I contacted the customer and I was like, all right, you're good to go. And he questioned about that emitter. And this is just a perfect example of why I need to just like, I really need to be more organized with, with my order. So anyhow, uh, not a problem. I was able to swap that out. It is independently wired up, okay? So you can get an animation uh, on that while the blade is out, which I, I think is a cool feature, right? But again, like, you know, it's just because I'm so unorganized, I had to go back and essentially work twice. Um, but that's fine. Uh, Nick gets what he, he, I mean, that is what he requested. So I had no problem uh, getting that done for him, for him, right? So that PCB is independently animated. Now, I don't know a lot of blade styles for these. I actually pulled this from Stock's uh, one of Stock's documentations, this animation. The PCB is from Shadowfoil, okay? So once you get your battery in, long story short, uh, I just really need to, to be more organized, right? So once you get your battery in, you can put your grip on. Now let's get a look at where your kill switch is. So your kill switch is right here. So you can take that pommel off and hit your kill switch really easily, okay? Um, and I thought that that was... Uh, really handy. Here's the speaker pod. Whoops. Speaker pod is in here. It will come out. It is in two pieces. All right. So you've got a spacer down here and then here is that pod. All right. So that can just stay inside of the hilt. Once you are powered up and ready to go, you can turn it on. There are both of those LEDs, both of those LEDs are lit and the blade is on, okay? All right. Let's come down to the bottom, okay? So there we go. Those LEDs are lit. PCB. So this... The, as for as far as the switches are concerned, right? So this upper switch, the blue switch, is your aux. The lower one will be your main. Okay. Let's put a blade in it. Okay, so this build will take a one-inch blade. Okay, so you want to rest your blade on those PCB pins. Okay. Then you want to tighten your set screw. So there's a set screw around back here that will serve as your blade retention. Just go ahead and tighten that and you are ready to go. Right. See what else you put on here. This like uh, buckled grip right here is very interesting to hold, okay? Interesting to swing with. Great sounding hilt. Lord Vader. This config has been set up with the fonts that were included on the SD card with the coffee board, okay? Let's do one more. Do you know Ezra Bridger? He's my friend. Okay. So, that is it. That is the custom hilt.
from Space Junk Sabers, right? Very, very interesting, colorful, colorful looking hilt, right? With that grip, super unique. Uh, that emitter looks very, very, very cool. And then, of course, we've got that emitter lit and animated. Okay. All right, so that's it. Nick, to you, thank you very much for your patience for this project. If anyone has any questions about this particular install or anything really, please do not be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always. Have a good one, everybody.